Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today I have Dead of Night on once again to talk about his new Brian Nexus Elder list. How are you doing today, Dead of Night? I'm great, Proxy. Have you? How have you been? It's been a minute. I've been pretty good. I know it has been a. It's been a while since we've done one of these videos, and I was yeah, glad to see. Oh yeah, dude, it's gonna be fun. Um, I was glad to see that you actually had a game recently with this list and you did really well in it. You didn't win. Yeah, I, but... I ended up losing, but I scored 82, mm -hmm. which is a pretty strong score, I feel. I, anything 80 and above is a strong score. Um, but it was, I lost by about eight points. Um, basically, I overcommitted. Um, that kind of lost me the game in the long run. But at the same time, I had exponentially more units left on the table than opponent. So that felt really good. Um, it's kind of one of those things you learn from your mistakes and carry on. You know, I made a couple right. mistakes that game, and it is what it is, you know. But, but it mean, was a close game, my first Pariah Nexus game. So I was super pumped about that. Um, and I was super happy with how the army performed as a whole. You know, if I didn't overcommit to one side of the board, that would have been an easy win. Yeah. That's like the thing with Eldar, right? Is that, you know, a lot of times if you make that one mistake in the beginning of the game, it's really hard to come back from it. But you did in right. a big way. You just couldn't manage to close out the game, which, you know, is fine. I think in general, Eldar are going to be strong in the new, you know, balanced day slate in Friday. Absolutely. Some people are kind of doom and gloom about the nerfs and about the Eldar in general, but. I would warn people that tournament win rate isn't exactly a good determiner of how strong a faction is or how strong a faction can be when played correctly. And, you know, will Eldar dominate like they did in the beginning of the edition? Absolutely not. <laughs> Nor should they. Not not like that. I yeah. don't think we'll ever dominate like that ever again in no. our history. No, that was that um, was a complete joke. I, I mean, yeah, it I... was funny, don't get me wrong, but, I mean... The amount of Eldar players playing in tournaments was just astronomical. So there was, of course, you know, a lot of data at that time that just basically proved Eldar were broken beyond repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond, you know? Yeah, so a lot of 10th edition kind of dropped, yeah, 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 10th edition dropped like a few weeks before my GT last year. And... Literally, Eldar games were lasting like twenty minutes, like <laughs> twenty minute right. games. <laughs> like, that what? sounds about right, dude. And and so like, yeah, by the end of turn one, uh, I had uh, a unit left, one unit. Like, excuse me. I think I think That's the horrible. biggest problem with that though, overall, is how dev wounds worked. Yeah, for really. Sure. Oh, absolutely. That and I mean Eldar were just so cheap. I mean, obviously the points, points yeah, oh. definitely the points. But like the way dev wounds worked, just put it way over the top. Absolutely, man. So I mean, we're not going to see that again, obviously, you know. And yes, yeah. the Eldar have been nerfed several times. There are nerfs I'm not like quite happy about, but you know, in general, I think because of the way the secret missions work and the new secondaries and stuff like that, I think we still have a pretty yeah. strong army. Yeah, and, maybe, maybe, maybe one day, uh, Games Workshop will let the brain trust, the real brain trust, write, write their, write our codex for us. You right. know, <laughs> I, and and that's the thing. I've always felt like Eldar has been in this weird space between OP and like terrible, but it's actually not in this current index. I know a lot of people are kind of, you know, again, like I would call it nerf fatigue. And I'm definitely feeling it. You know, after being nerfed every single balance day slate, it's oh. like. You know. I've had this weird thing where I've been kind of enjoying it because I really like to write lists. Yeah. All I do is write lists, so like every like four months I get to write new lists because it's right. kind of a bunch of changes, you know. Yeah. The way I look at it is we get to try new things and you know make some substitutions here and there and see if we can bring out a better result than yeah. before. Exactly. I mean, the, the, on the, on the other token, though, I can understand because it is an expensive hobby, right. so like. Oh yeah. my god, like my unit I just bought into is garbage now. So cool. Or, Screw this game. <laughs> like or, or maybe even, you know, my list went up 70 points and now I have to cut a unit to strike the scorpions from it. And I just bought those. They're new models. 
It yeah, was and I love that. A little bit <laughs> cheated, and and as yeah. they should, right? They should feel upset about that aspect of it. But I think as far as a balance aspect, people are you know upset because I I, I know I, yeah yeah so, I think I think I maybe I have this misconception probably like yourself like I just have so many toys now that it's like I kind of flex with the nerfs sort of right. thing, and a lot of people can't necessarily do that. Oh yeah, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, true. I mean, a lot of people are like, I have my army, and this is how it is, and I spent a lot of money on it, and I don't want to change it. Right, yeah, yeah. We're, we're probably the only freaks that are going to be like, yeah, I'm, I have 10,000 points of Eldar. Let's play. Well, like, for me, it's just an easy or whatever, matter. Whatever, you know. know. Like, oh, what kind of circle, what kind of cardboard do I have to... <laughs> to, to, to proxy <laughs> well, you know, with. proxy here, proxy there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've proxied most of the army for a couple of editions now, but Anyway, but yeah, um, <laughs> guys, I mean, truthfully, I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on the army either. I don't want three of you every unit, you know? Um, proxy, but... proxy, you need to start introducing some uh, printing tutorials. I feel like it makes sense. You know, how do we print I these models? I wish I had, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I know, I proxy hammer. You would think that I would be into 3D printing, but, you know, I just, don't have Just called you right out. I know. I use cardboard, guys. I cut out cardboard. I honestly, I, 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 I want to see that too, though. <laughs> you know, I want to see that too. On this channel, I used to have an OG video of Car cardboard me cheaper than resin. Cutting them out. No, seriously, I had a video of me cutting out cardboard and saying, "This is how you make a cardboard model." And I had a little toothpick, uh, and I cut it to the size of an Elder Guardian. I said, "That's an Elder Guardian." There you go. It's a toothpick with a base. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I, yeah, is is that tournament legal? Hell no. Proxy, it, that, it sounds, works. Uh, that sounds like those are some methods you might have used when you were eight years old. Hey, they still work today, man. They <laughs> still work today. And actually, when I was eight, I was very particular about actually having the models, but I'm not anymore. I don't care. <laughs> when you have to start Plastic base. It, 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 yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's fine. It works. I can play games. I can go down to my local shop and be like, hey, guys. And they're like, as long as you fucking, I mean, they've t told me, they're like, proxy, as long as you label the models. Right. And I, I'm fine. Like, I, I think at the, at, at the end of the day, like, there is an intimidating price point to the hobby, but I will say, like, literally, if you just have patience and collect over time, eventually you're just going to be like us and be like, I don't even know what to paint anymore because there's so much in the garbage chute. I gotta fix up and paint and right. look at, it's deal a very, with. Very intense, you know. Me, you know, so so I can but, definitely understand the fatigue that some people. Yeah, I, do I'm at the point though too. Like I have so many things that like I have extras of things. So like when people are starting, when people in my club, they're like, "Oh, I want to play Eldar." You just hell yeah, you want to play Eldar? Here's some <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's so. Like, cool. Let's go. You want to borrow this? These tanks? You want to play all this stuff? Let's let's play Eldar. You know, you, I love that. You are an absolute absolute giga chad man i i mean i wish that was the case with me actually i have the opposite story so get this when i was a kid there was a big raffle for an elder army and i had just i had about maybe 750 points worth of elder at the time and i was collecting Ooh. and there was a raffle and i was really hoping for that and i remember the raffle they were drawing it and i didn't win it of course some other guy won it and i went up to him and i said hey is, would it be okay if I bought one of the units off of you? I think it would be really cool to have. He was like, no. I think I'm going to keep it and just, just have it as a kind of a prize army or something like that. And I was like, yeah. as a dude, I mean, honestly, if I was an adult, I would have called him out on that. If yeah. you know, I saw him doing that to another, like, dude, let him buy, let him buy a unit from you. But man, right. like... That was just the moment I realized <laughs> there are some people in this hobby who are who are, are not so cool. But that's it, awesome yeah, that it, you're there that, for those that, players. Yeah, that that is unfortunate. But like you know, when I was a kid, just much like yourself, this game was super toxic and gross back then, and right. the culture has changed exponentially oh, since yeah, then. Well. And I want to keep supporting that culture. You know, like yeah. I. Very true. The ki the kids the kids of this game are the game's future. At the end of the day, yeah, you know, if I ever have a chance to play against like a a 
12 year old kid who you know i've done it before it's like oh you want to play a thousand points with me because that's all he's got absolutely i want to play a thousand points with you and guess what he's gonna whoop my ass too yeah it's gonna you be know fun. we're gonna roll dice and have fun yeah right. exactly that's why we all play this game to have a great time you know that's cool and hopefully he'll remember that moment and keep playing the game you know even though there's all these tax fellows out there absolutely but like i said not, not as much really not as prevalent this day and age yeah because people are willing to call those people out for it you know it, it yeah, wasn't like exactly. when we grew up where those kind of players got away with it because they were the ones buying all the models so you know the managers right. wouldn't stand up for you other players wouldn't stand up for you it was like all right bring it you know <laughs> i mean right. you know you're you're a kid playing against adults most of the time and it's like and they're cheating to win like it's a little bit a little bit funny but but anyway okay <laughs> so we have this list here that you played and now you played against space wolves it was a pretty close game why don't you yes yeah, it was an intense game i loved it um now you I'll have talk way talk leaper. Way leaper, of course, right? the, I, I think the biggest difference i do with my way, way leaper i like the manda blasters so mm -hmm. if my autark is getting charged i'm wrong right interesting if my autark is getting charged, I don't need like why would I need to fight first? I'm just already wrong. My uh, my autark he's going to be the one doing the charging, and so you he's going to be him aggressively, but in a way that you're not going to get charged back. You make sure that you right. So like the first first two turn. first two three turns of game, he's going to be chilling, doing his autark thing. Maybe he'll come up, support a unit, shoot a fusion gunshot. Nothing crazy. But late game, if I need him to support a unit with his melee, he can. And at that point, he'll slap with dev wounds where I may need him to. You know what I mean? Right. So, because generally, the entire game, you want your way leaper to be safe. You want your 2CP every single turn. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, so, that makes sense. That does make sense. So, give me the mana blasters, give me the dev wounds, because I'm only putting him into melee when it's on my terms. See, my thought with it is I want to heroically intervene, you know? I want to, I mean, especially now, because it's only one CP, you know? If you're heroically intervening with a way leaper, though, and you're spending one CP to hit somebody with, you know, four attacks, I feel like that's not necessarily the best avenue either. Like, you're in a sticky situation at that point. Either way, you think it's you know, so, just best. And, and at that point, you're in heroically intervene with the Manda Blasters. You know, yeah. bring the punch at that point. Yeah, true. I like Manda Blasters. I do. I've run them a few times, and when they didn't roll sixes for me, I just... Like, l literally every time my way leaper gets charged, it, it dies. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're, he's in melee, it's going to be on my terms, and he's going to punch you with some dev right. wounds if I need him. I mean, you also have the Phoenix Gem anyway, so yeah. you just die. I, Phoenix, yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix Gem is also definitely stock for him. Yeah. I think at this point. Oh, I love I'll... the Phoenix Gem for sure. Have you ever considered putting the Fates Messenger with the Man Blasters? Absolutely. <laughs> but I think that's A, if you want to save points on Phoenix Gem, like you don't want to spend the 35 points, mm -hmm. Fates Messenger is perfectly okay. It's a slight downgrade, but also not because you can use it for your save. Right. So at the end of the day, it's also an extra defensive ability for the Way Leaper. But how often are you saving him? You know, you got loan op, you're keeping him safe. Yeah, it's, true. But it's a, it's an extra defense there for him. Right. Um, it allows and, you to kind of play and, a little more aggressive. Exactly. You save, you save 20 points too, which is, you know, it's not laughable. <laughs> right. But you can use that for the fusion gun as well if you need to, like, maybe shoot at something that's out of its strength. Mm -hmm. um then here you go here's a fusion gun shot auto wound you take your save you know here's d6 damage there you go here's six you can even fate dice the damage at that point with your fusion gun with uh fate's messenger absolutely or no you can't do damage my bad well you could use it oh you, you could do the fate dice damage yeah. but yeah auto wound there you right. go that's so, the one <laughs> yeah for sure like even on overwatch you know you could use a six for you know the fate's messenger on overwatch and then you can follow up with a fate dice if you wanted to right? exactly so so you know i f i feel like don't 
shy from Bates and Messenger. I've I've had a list where the Whaley Bears had it and seems good. But uh usually we say Fates Messenger for the next man yes. in line. The Death Jester. <laughs> the Jester. I love the Jester. Yeah, so... the Jester liter- literally he's the one that needs it. He's the best thing you can put it on. Absolutely. So. It's just it's a free sustained three, you know? It's a free six shots and then you're probably going to get another you know, yeah, after, after, after they game. nerfed it, he's the best option now. Absolutely. Um, I like him a lot right now in Pride and Nexus. He, Pride and Nexus, like, uh, like we've been kind of talking about, is shifting more towards um, MSU and infantry base, kind of less armor, mm-hmm. more stuff on the table. Um, Death Jester is the perfect boy <laughs> for that because he, he really is he, he is great. <laughs> um and it's another dev wound piece so like what i've been learning is if we trickle out dev wounds throughout our list it helps the entirety of um the army come together at the end of the day because it makes it so a lot of your units can maybe they're out of position, but they're supporting a unit they don't normally support, mm-hmm. but they can all of a sudden just because they have dev wounds. Right. Very true. Actually. And yeah. it, it, it really helps the synergy throughout the entire list, just having dev wounds scattered throughout. And you, you'll notice it too. Like I run three by five scorpions. They also have dev wounds. So like it kind of becomes this theme and pattern, right. which I think is kind of strong at the end of the day this i've been is learning kind of a dev's wound army in general isn't it you kind of have a lot of devastating wounds so you don't really have to worry about high armor yeah eldar right? as a whole yeah yeah no i really like that i mean you know but your particular list has a lot no of yeah you just sprinkle it yeah sprinkle yeah. it throughout yeah yeah i really like that and i think it's especially good on things like like people think that dev wounds are actually better on like high strength single shot attacks but i would actually disagree most of the time because exactly you know and, when are you going to roll that natural six on one dice you know like d cannons for example or you know even right. like the heavy wraith cannon of the wraith knight and, which is, and they don't they don't spill over anymore either right. so what do you sometimes what are you losing you know yeah it, it's like the way you're I, losing damage absolutely and, and the way i put it to people it's like you know a fire dragon has a strength nine gun AP minus four and D6 damage, but you have the melted two, so that basically changes into D6 plus two. That's the same as a bright lance, right? When you really think about it, but with one more AP. When you compare that to something like a D cannon, D cannon is doing D6 plus two, but yep. it still has just AP minus four. So yep. you're basically ignoring armor anyway. The only difference is occasionally you might ignore an invul save. With a right. cannon versus with fire dragon. Exactly. So it, it, so in the the, the prime fail. example, the prime example of this proxy literally is warp spiders. Yeah. Anybody that's played with them knows, <laughs> like them little them little dev wound chip damage that you get off them. They are the janitors of our army, and I think honestly the best unit. Yeah, I've I mean, grown, they have... I've grown to believe in them that strongly, even with the points increase. No, they're really good. For sure, especially in Prime Nexus, because they're going to be able to kind of zip around the battlefield and complete actions, no problem. And the the boards are a lot denser now, so that provides more survivability for them. You know, like right. they're they're so good. They clean up all your problems <laughs> mid game. <Absolutely. laughs> like, even using but, two units to clear up something that you need. Exactly. Even even, even two is fun. two is fantastic. Two is great. Um. I will say though, you got to be very patient with them. You got to be very careful with them. When Absolutely. they when they just die to like stormbolter shots, you feel real bad and sad. Oh, 100% of the time, man, cuz they will die to stormbolters for sure. Like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um so you rule got number one. R- yep, yeah, that's rule number 1. Don't leave your house without your far seer. Um, Absolutely. L- literally like even I shouldn't have to say much after branching fates, but he does so much more than that. Um, and well, guide, I mean, obviously. Just, but you know, he's just a beast by himself, right? I mean, Eldritch Storm is the storm, perhaps yeah. one of the best psychic shooting attacks, not only for the Eldar, yeah. but the game. You know, I just want to add now. So Eldritch Storm is AP two. Yeah. And 
that's great, but everything has cover. So Elderstorm basically always has AP1, right? Right. But now the Vipers are cheaper. It just fucking it just turns on Elder Storm so much more. Right. So especially if you see the Wind Riders re-rolling exactly. all the hiding. Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah, ignore cover with Elder Storm is gross. It's gross. So, it's so good, dude. When when your lone farseer just kills three terminators randomly. It feels so good. <laughs> it, it really, it really and you're like, good. excuse, I'm sorry. Like you apologize because you feel bad, kind of. <laughs> but I mean, not really. But God, you feel bad for the player. I remember this one <laughs> game I played, and it was against my Dark Angels buddy, and he had exactly that. He had a unit of five or six Terminators. I can't remember, it, but the, there were the new ones, the the big bulky ones, the Deathwing ones, and the Wind Riders shot at them and just completely mowed them down. It wasn't even funny. And then I remember it was what was even more hilarious was after that was kind of completed, the Farser Skyrunner shot his attacks at him. And all that was left was a character and blew him out of the water with Elder Storm. Right. It was just three failed invuls, dead. Get out of here. Sometimes it spikes and, you know. Your farce, your Skyrunner blows up a tank. <laughs> You're like, what? That oh my! Also happened. Yes. Like he has, he does have that power. Like at the end of the yeah. day, I mean, it's all D three damage. So say just base six shots, D three damage. Everything spikes. Um, three times six, eighteen. There you go, eighteen damage. That lone man can just juice. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I've done um. I've done about five, six damage with his ability to like dreadnought. Yeah, yeah. Like, right, more, exactly. More yeah, it's just, like it's good. Yep. Yeah. So, if, and if you can do that with your storm, then your spider, your janitor spiders come and clean it up. Absolutely, no problem. 100%. <laughs> like so, but my biggest argument with the farseer always is branching fates because that is our army ability, and we need to nurture that because right. it literally wins us the game. And I actually found that when, when using the Farcer Skyrunner with a Death Jester, using branches yeah. on the Death Jester is actually a good move yeah. now. Right? Like, because, yeah. you know, the so your first, is not, you're, you're, yeah. your Death Jester, like your first three shots, right? You roll that one natural six, you get your Fate's Messenger fail to a six, and then, yeah, your Fate's Messenger, your little one strands dice to you a get six. A Eldar yeah, which is now 12 shots out of that man. It's official now. Like, yeah, it's official. Leave us alone. Please leave us alone. Yeah. Thank God. Well, I, I've just, I mean, some people have, you know, given me over the, over the uh, last few months, given me shit over, over using it that way in games. But I mean, that's how it's supposed to be used, you know? So, what exactly. You exactly. So you also have Wagon. Oh, oh, yeah. And Cahandras as well. Both Phoenix Swords in here. So Fuegan, oh, yeah. we obviously know why people take Fuegan. You know, very yeah, tough, I, hard to kill. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to talk about him. Yep, he's 10 wounds basically of pure fire. Absolutely. The Fire Axe can, can take out Terminators in a binge, you know? Exactly, um, exactly. That's what's great. so huge with it. Having him like with the five pack of fire dragons is all of a sudden they just have this like random weird melee element they can do to finish off their problems if they need yeah. to. You know, it's great. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I run them separately. I run them in the same serpent or falcon, I should say. But um, separate. But I I separate them. Yeah, but when you when you're hitting on twos though, prox. Wow, what? Yeah, why separate them? I guess so. There's so, the separate entities. So they're separate entities. One. Um, the other reason is because Fuegan, of course, you know, being able to kind of go off and do his own thing, you necess don't necessarily want your fire dragons in combat. So having them separate means that Fuegan can charge in, but your fire dragons don't have to, right? Sure. Which I gives you I feel though. Issues. I feel generally if they're in that position together, though, the fire dragons are probably just dead on opponent's turn. Probably, but then they're going to have to split their fire, right? So they're going to have to True. choose, and they're going to have to fire, split yeah. fire. You know, and here's the thing. I think people do say... So, yeah, so they, they fire, attack Fwagon and but, just kind of let the fire dragons live. Well, here's the thing, right? Like... Like, an opponent can say, my unit is shooting half a shots here and half a shots there. But what I yeah. love about 
forcing an opponent to do that is that now if one side of the one side of their dice rolls really bad and one side rolls really good well that's that's perfect because now something survived exactly yeah whereas before yep. and, nothing would have yep and th that's one of my most important like rules to myself in warhammer as a whole is anything you can do in the game to force your opponent to make a tough decision like that is huge oh it's massive absolutely huge yeah, Anytime you could to... force your opponent to make decisions and then the dice fail them on their decisions, right? you did that, you know, that's so that's exactly cool. That's exactly why I run them separate. I do like the 2 plus to hit, and if I was going against something, like if I was fighting a list that had insane amount of tanks, like a triple Dorn list or a Bane, a double yeah. Bane blade, I would run them together because if I split them up, they're both going to die anyway <laughs> because it's a Bane right. blade. But I, th I think generally, like, if they're together in a falcon like that, I imagine generally they're gonna die regardless. They're, they're I would. Dead. I would. Well, <laughs> yeah. I <have> <laughs> like, I mean, You'd be surprised, dude, roll your twos, Broxy. Roll your twos. Maybe it's just me. I roll inherently terrible, so like, I want to hit on twos. <laughs> dude, you would be surprised how survivable with a two plus armor save and cover Fuegan can be. Honestly. Oh yeah, no, yeah, especially absolutely. if he's engaged with a unit. No, I'm saying two to hit one. with the other dragons. Oh, yeah, That's what sure. I'm saying. <laughs> no, 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 I mean plus one to hit is good. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I've run them together before when I'm going against something that I really need that two plus to hit. But you know, yeah, if I'm going it, against your average marine list and I'm going against, you know, like for example, I want to target aggressors with them or stuff, I don't really need to hit on twos. You know what I mean? Like they're not yeah, going mean, to give me a mic. They're not going right. to have stealth. Yeah. You know? Like I said, at the end of the day, like to me that two up to hit that that gives you five percent increased chance to hit everything you know no it is good all sure. right i don't know i don't know the percent but uh, the math off the top of my head but yeah it increases the odds of all the dragons hitting every single time oh by it actually increases it by 16 percent. so it's, it's see? Quite okay a bit. you did the math already it's quite a bit but <laughs> yeah, if you're see, looking at six dice basically like fuegan and five dragons you're probably going to hit with Fuegan. You're going to miss with two dragons. You're going to reroll, and that's probably going to turn into a hit. So you're missing yeah. one with, you know, Fuegan being out of the unit or in the unit. Sorry. No, did I say that right? No, uh, I said it wrong. Sorry. With Fuegan in the unit, you're only going to miss one time. You're going to reroll it, and you're going to hit. You're going to hit a lot. Right. If he's not in the unit, you're probably going to only hit with four out of five. Right. But still, so, I well, mean, if you're proxy or if you're dead of night, you're gonna hit with two, you're gonna hit with and then you're gonna <laughs> wound with one, and then you're gonna do one damage. One damage. There you go, dude. And then you're gonna die. <laughs> no, for sure, dude. That has happened to me before as well. Sometimes they whiff. For sure. No, for sure. With Fagin, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He he kind of makes it whiff proof. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you have Kahandras in here as well, and he's yeah. just a beast at ninety points. I mean. He's amazing, right? Devin I thought he was a beast at 100 points. Yeah, he's good. All they did was, I guess, offshoot my spiders in this list a little right. bit. Yeah, for sure. You took a few but, hits, and you Kahandras oh, took a points decrease. I, I never really mainstream Kahandras. I always... Uh, I always uh, kind of played him in fringe games just to see what he could do you know i like to do that with a lot of different units that we have just to see what they're made of I, we're like oh i haven't played this in a while let's see what it can do right what i've found is with, especially with the, also the decrease to the regular scorpions with mm -hmm. how hard they hit if you just use them to do their job go hit go hit up some infantry unit even terminators him with your five pack of scorpions can just go boss a five pack of terminators, no problem. So let me ask you this: Do you run them together with the scorpions with Condras? I've been mean? running. I've been running him with in this list. What I've been doing is running him with a five pack in a in a falcon. In a falcon, nice. Yeah, that's really powerful. So exactly. So if you can get that, if you get that falcon, you know, wave with that, it's super nice. So basically. I guess you show them the rest of the list, Brax. Let's go okay. through, run through the list. Yeah, we, let's we, run through it. We're we, going we by unit here. So we have two Falcons, which we know what they do. One of them has the, and you have Scatter Laser on here, but I assume Bright Lance. 
right? Absolutely. Yeah. And obviously the cannon, right? So yeah, I think maybe, maybe we missed some things. Go in here. Fire dragons go in the other one? Yep, so, yep. And you fire dragon, fire dragons go in the other one. And then you have a fire dragon unit, I suppose, in strategic reserve or just on foot? I like to put them in strat reserve, strat yeah. Strat reserve, nice. That's nice for taking out heavy infantry and stuff like that. That's great. You have three scorpions. Yep, three scorps. Yep. So that gives me one in the boat with Karandras, and that gives me two infiltrators. infiltrators I like that because they can definitely take use or take advantage. Of and sometimes, sometimes, sometimes with that setup, the Falcon might meet both squads of those, and all of a sudden you're getting jumped by Karandras and fifteen scorpions. Right. <laughs> After you got shot up by a bunch of uh, warp spiders, which we'll get to. And then you have two units of swooping hawks, right? Two, yeah, two units. Yep, and objective monkeys. Honestly, what I found is you're still going to need swooping hawks in your lists. You may be able to yeah, kind of I, decrease them a little bit, but you're still going to need found, at least one unit. I found in this particular game, I might not have even needed the second squad. The one, mm -hmm. the one squad, just if you just keep them safe and let them do their thing the whole time, seemed okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe they'll score you eight points randomly in the game, which is nuts. Right. Absolutely bonkers for eighty five point swooping off totally unit. I totally agree. I, I think you probably can get away with just using one unit, but I mean they're decent shooters as well. Exactly, which uh, you know that goes back into the infantry meta. They can they can you're shooting two squads, you got forty shots at, at infantry, which is there you go, lethal hits. Very true. Triple viper in this Triple list. Triple viper, mm. dude. I like it. So, Viper's nasty. There's Prionexus, dense terrain, tight boards, people in your face. We need to strip that cover save. Mm -hmm. We get rid of that. It just increases our damage. Proxy, do you know the percentage? I, <laughs> it just increases our damage as a whole. Well, it, it decreases you know. the amount of saves your opponent can make by one. So which increases our out. damage, yeah. For which sure. increases our damage in the long run. So it, it basically ensures that the AP on your weapon is is true AP, right? So it right. ensures that your so, bright lances are going to be AP three, your yep. you know fire prisms are going to be AP four, stuff like that. So I wanted to really see what the vipers could do. So I ran all three, and I will say maybe I didn't need all three, mm -hmm. but when running three, you could throw one away, not care, right? Um. At the end of the day, it's a very, very cheap uh, Bright Lance yep. vehicle. And it's something and that can screen out something, right? Because it's a vehicle it's, that yeah. is semi-long oh hole, you know? This, this particular game, I screened out a charge on my Falcon with a Viper. You know, using the train and everything. I put the Viper right in front of the Falcon, shot the Bright Lance, knew it was going to explode. <laughs> but it, it prevented my Falcon from dying that, that next turn. Which was huge. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, being only 75 points, it's cheaper than Shroud Runners for screening, right? Yeah. Like, the screening unit that I always use is Shroud Runners, and they're 80. Viper is now cheaper, so Vipers can kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, just be a body there. And they can take Um Yeah. Different, different roles a little bit, you know, between the two units, but at the same time, like, I think... The Viper is now, with its points decrease, inserted its role in the meta as, especially with the boards being dense, you better run one. Yeah, I think run people one. are going to run at least one of them. Like, least. you will not They're regret good. it. They're really good. I mean, I was, Super I found myself land. running one up until, really up until Fate Guys got nerfed. I, th I think three is a little extreme, but... Yeah. For the points cost, it's really not at the end of the day because right. you now have three units and three bright lances, and three different ways to strip cover from your opponent to right. turn on your army. You know what it like, is? How much more does that multiply your damage having three? Oh, instances dude, absolutely. Of that, Especially if you're you know? running things like wind riders, and you know, it, it is going to increase the damage considerably. Yeah, you, you'll see. In, you'll see in my changes. I did sacrifice a viper down to two. Mm -hmm. But I I made up for that firepower in a better way I thought so it was okay and I still I'm still running too I still have them there they're still doing their thing right okay so we got the vipers which are really good 
And basically, I like to think of them like three of these is essentially two Warwalkers. You minus a Bright Lance, but you add the Ignore's Cover. And you have mm -hmm. three units in three different places instead of two units in two different places. So that means one of these can be doing an action or something like that. And again, they're, they are f pretty fast. And with free pivots, exactly, they're, they're get, fast. They're faster. Yeah. It doesn't feel terrible to do an action with them either at the end oh, of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're yeah, it's like, okay, I, I didn't get to shoot my Bright Lance, but maybe I didn't, couldn't anyways because of um, vision or well, who cares? At the end of the day, 75 points for an action all day. Absolutely. All day. And then, of course, this comes to your favorite unit, the Warp Spider. So you have three units. Yeah, of, they, of warp I've spiders. always liked them. I've always loved them. But now they in 10th edition, they have hit the top end. It was. Oh, it used yeah. to be Ass Man. It used to be Ass Man. But now the Warp Spiders have taken that. Ass They're... Man only out of respect, really, not because of what he does, yeah, but sure. kind of what he does. Yeah, <laughs> he killed Bel. He killed Belcor for me, so. You got you got to have some respect. He's in my heart. Me. Yeah, <laughs> for that, absolutely. So, War but, Spiders, you've kind of already talked about this, but really good on actions. Devastating wound chip damage is really strong because it's almost guaranteed, and you could even spike on it. Although I have yeah, seen that go the other way sometimes in really bad so, cases. <laughs> so, Warp Spiders, we keep talking about force multipliers, right? So, mm -hmm. each squad of Warp Spiders you bring to a We'll call it a team fight, right? See, so you got your scorpions about to go in melee. Um, you got uh, uh, something. Maybe fire dragons are going to shoot at that unit too. So you're going to shoot at them with fire dragons. Your pistols. You know you're going to melee them. Bring the spiders up too. We'll all, also we soften them up with dev wounds from the spiders. Now they're taking dev wounds from the scorpions, and it's like these three little units that are insignificant to the game and an opponent's eyes suddenly just absolutely wreck something, you know, that's way out of their weight class. Oh, big time. You know? People are surprised at warp spiders because of the dev wounds. Yeah. I'll, I'll use the warp spiders to just go clean up big things, too. I mean, you, you say you get connect two bright lance shots for, like, I don't know, 10 damage on a 12 wound tank. You know, you connect it. You get that, you get that damage in, but you don't have anything else to really get there or whatever the warp spiders range of movement alone they'll get there and they'll finish it off so you just move them ahead of time you know or or whatever you know like maybe maybe this won't kill this but the warp spiders might guarantee that for me they they just finish the deal they clean it up they are the superior janitors of 40k <laughs> they very much are um I think two squads is great. I don't think I would run any less in my eyes competitively anymore. Less than two? Correct. Yeah. I think two two by five, you you need them in Eldar. Interesting. You might be right. They're definitely pretty good. Okay, let's look at the changes you made after your first game. So you played a game against Space Wolves, and then, of course, you changed the list a little bit, and why did you make the changes that you did? Let's go ahead and go through it. So we have the Autark Wave Leaper, same thing there, same thing with the Forest here. Your character so I took almost they're the same, all the same. I, I, took I took out the Death Jester. I did. Mm -hmm. So I made a fatal mistake when I was playing, a player error. Um, this happens all the time, and I'll be the first to admit it right here. So I thought the Death Jester's um, ability applied to the, like your next turn, basically. I didn't realize it ended in the shooting phase. Yes. So I, I, I did shoot Overwatch with him with his ability, thinking that it worked that way. Mm -hmm. Going back on it, it's not how it works. So so I apologize, yep. Space Wolf opponent, even <laughs> though it didn't really matter. Right. <laughs> but now I know. So that made him in my eyes a little less a little more weak. Not saying that he's not not saying that he's weak, but it made him less effective in my head so i was thinking that's a good chunk of points i have enough to kill infantry stuff maybe i'll regret taking him out don't get me wrong but i wanted to, i was looking to what i want to take out without like kind of killing my vibe he kind of seemed like maybe that piece interesting okay for sure um 
Well, I mean, in this list, you have a lot it, of amphetamine. I'll, I'll anyway, give you. So. You'll kind of see a little better reasoning when you see what I added. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> let's, let's take a look. So you have the. Two well, I took goblins, him out. You have the two fire dragons. Yep. Still. Yep. Ah, the lynx. I added the lynx. Yes. <laughs> So we could talk a lot about the links, especially now with the pivot rules. So it gets a free pivot. But what I realized I was kind of lacking in my list was the extra laser beams. Mm -hmm. And going into competitive too, like this is this is my future GT list I'm trying to work on. Um, it's in August, early August, so I'm trying to get it ready and cram games and get ready to go. So I realized. I'm lacking kind of like some big firepower, you know. Um, I had a decent amount with the three Vipers and the two Falcons, but like, okay, all your Vipers miss their Bright Lance shots. You connect one Bright Lance shot for two damage. It just didn't feel good throughout the game. Right. So I'm like, what can I do that also kind of has speed, which I also felt I was lacking some speed. So I overcommitted... Falcons die. My fire dragons are running across the board for their lives to score points or do anything. It felt bad. Right. I also felt like I needed some beef. So like your I, fix is I'm pretty on that too. Right. Can go from one side of the board to the other. I need some speed, them. some beef, and some laser beams. What fits the bill? That bad boy right there. <laughs> The Lynx. I think the Lynx is actually pretty good. If you're just going to take one... And with these pivot roll changes, I'm sure they'll get fact, but it can move. <laughs> it can move. Yeah, for <laughs> it's sure. A big, well, it's a big old tank. Well, I mean, even if they do... And by the way, like to anyone out there listening to this and, and thinks the pivot rules are cheese, they, they are. Um, I don't think GW thought of... Yeah, I, 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 yeah. The, the I also agree that they, they are thing. cheese. Yeah, the whole skimmer thing yeah. wasn't thought about. But even if they do just FAQ it to say, oh, yeah, you know, skimmers um, on flying bases, they have to also pay the two inches. Yeah. That's fine I, because we're moving I just, faster. I just want to say, I just want to say I'm still picking the links in that scenario regardless because of those reasons I stated. Well, it advances um, nine inches, right? Yeah, it moves 23 inches and can still shoot its Lynx Pulsar, right. which is strength 16, <laughs> AP 3, D6 damage, four yeah. shots, you know. Really good. So it can still book it and just shoot laser beams if you needed it to. Right. Um, and like I said, I need. I felt like I need some more beef in the list. That's, it's a big old, what was it, 15 or 16 wound tank? 15 right. wounds, I think. Three up, five up. Is that one of our few tanks with an infall save? It, it fit the bill for me. I want to play with a big toy. Let's yeah, let's try sure. it out. You it's know? cool, and you have the model, so it's a really cool model as well. And I think yeah, it's good, especially might as well play it before it goes away. You know, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah, you said fire and fade. Yeah, fire and fade. That thing's ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. Move twenty one <laughs> inches. You know, then move another fourteen. Yeah, it's it's glorious. Um. No. Yeah. Definitely. The pivot rules are cheese. I only am looking to abuse them because I'm trying to p play competitively. Um, that's the yeah, only real I mean, reason. I, because I, think... because I, know, I know for a fact it will be used against me. And right. that that kind of has been a fatal mistake for me over the years playing competitively is yep. like thinking I'm going to go into a tournament and like, yeah, I'm not going to play that cheese. I'm above that cheese. And then you nah, get the same thing. No, tossed then the, then yeah. the cheese gets thrown in your face. Yeah, You might as well just eat the cheese. Dude. Eat it up. Absolutely. That's what I've been saying. You're, you're going to play competitively? Eat that cheese. <clears throat> I totally agree. And I think it's just <laughs> it's just knowing, and, and many, many players have, have talked about this, knowing what environment you're in, you know, knowing what setting you're in is really important when playing 40K to have a good time. If you plan yeah. on going to a tournament and you say, oh, that's cheese, I'm not going to do it, or I refuse to use it, you're going to get it used against you. Exactly. And you can argue and you can call the TO over and everything and they can come over and they can say, well, that's the rule. You know, that's it. That's it. That's how it's going to go down. Probably. Yeah. Unless the TO is more of a, you know, nuanced kind of thinker, which I haven't met right. too many right. like nuanced tournament organizers, no, but I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah. I, I have one up in my one. region. I, the man is so amazing and he does so much for our community up here. Oh my goodness. Mad mad props to him. I'll leave him unnamed for now, but he knows. Yeah. 
that's awesome, man. Yeah, there are some good, honest guys out there that that really absolutely, just want absolutely. Their to be like, super fun. When your when your TO is in tears because he's giving away awards at the end of the tournament, and he's so like happy with like how like his tournament is becoming successful, like that's that's such a good feeling for everyone, no matter what happened during the tournament. You know, absolutely. like that's great to see in the community, and like that's why I play the game these days yeah. like those feel good moments at the end of the day like you like we're all people we're all you know yeah there's definitely uh, more to warhammer than just the game itself right it's a community and um, exactly yeah, that's important as well for sure my next change i had these rangers in proxy so oh, i yeah. needed i needed to save 10 points i was 10 points over so i was like i'm gonna sack a scorpion insert the ranger nice and they'll probably do similar things you know yeah they're still no gonna big move deal. block for you they're still going yeah. to infiltrate block you know they're, they're good. maybe oddly enough i need to shoot a character or something who knows hey i've you killed know? Dude, yeah, exactly I've killed characters it, it, before. yeah it yeah. gives you a little tool little tool toolbox element there as well you know absolutely you know it's funny actually one time i I used him point blank. I just moved up, shot a character point blank in the face, and killed him. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was so funny because the guy was like, "That is not how you use a sniper rifle." <laughs> <laughs> just imagine my, my, this guy's like, just like, you know, because the my, weapons my, are my, sharp, you know. <laughs> exactly. My next add-on was these sky weavers. So, sky weavers is probably one of our better units too. Um, I'm, I was trying to get a little more balanced, like kind of how your list was. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Skyweavers, even just the two pack, like here's an instant answer to vehicles. Like no matter how you look at it, instant answer to vehicles. How many vehicles have feel no pain? Maybe besides uh, Nurgle ones. I don't know. <laughs> like Black Templars, uh, but, but yeah. they only have a six up, you know? Right, so here's your like guaranteed damage on the vehicles. Where you need it, when you need it, it'll be there. And also, I like to run glaives. Gives a little melee element if you need it in a pinch. For sure. It is pretty good um, against, you know, kind of a lower toughness. And like, you know. Skyweavers free up your laser beams to shoot non-vehicle, like monsters and things like that that might need those, <laughs> might need the bigger damage anyways. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing about the the um, and they always make their points back too. Skyweavers always. Yeah, and the haywire blasters they're, they're pretty good even even into monsters. I mean, you can roll sixes. You know, you still are doing devastating you, moves. You, you will play that fringe game where they the opponent has no vehicles, right? So, like, what right. do you do with them? You can still block with them. Get into melee with them, like especially block. So the block is kind of huge. They got the big viper bases. They can block some avenues too, right. so they aren't completely useless in that scenario. But as a in a balanced, like competitive build, I think they can be, you know, invaluable. Yeah, agree, hundred percent. Um. So yeah, I I thought yeah we there we added them, we had the links, and we had the rangers. So we took out the solitaire, a scorpion. A death and a viper or yeah, yeah. that's just I, I i've been mixing them up since eldar started for sure man they almost look the same <laughs> but uh yeah so i took out a scorpion i took out the death jester and i took out one viper and then i added lynx looks like you took out a swooping hawk ranger as well, cause you oh yeah and one hawk yeah and one hawk and that I added lynx ranger sky weavers yeah yeah because kind of like we were talking about earlier that one hawk um you don't necessarily need the two, I don't think, especially because I'm running the three warp spiders. I kind of had one hockey in all game bouncing around, but not really doing much, but shooting. And it just didn't feel right, you know? So maybe I could use those points elsewhere in a better fashion. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of where I landed. So we're going to try this these changes out and see how it goes. Overall, though, like I didn't feel like I had to make too many changes at all, you know? Oh yeah, I for traded, sure. I traded like three units for three units. Nothing crazy. Um, yeah, I just want to seemed... try something else out and see if I if the list feels better that way. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're making so many changes that it just completely rewrites what the list is or how the list is going to play. You know, so 
Yeah, yeah. Our goal is just to make our goal is just to make it more effective in doing what it does. Yeah, I like it. I like the list. I love the scorpion and warp spider synergies too, with all the devastating wounds being able to take out tough targets. It's it's really cool. Yep. Is there any units you would consider putting in a list like this, Proxy? <laughs> well, I, I think you already know. Yeah, if you say so, I'm good. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse. If I got to put in Stormguard, I got to take out my Lynx. And I mean, we all know the answer to that. Yeah, the Lynx is good. Dude. <laughs> the Lynx is good. I don't know. I don't know what I would take out, honestly. I, I think, I mean, this is obviously something that you've, been working on so I was, play. yeah i was curious yeah i was curious because it's similar to the list that you've been running and uh yeah i mean i think the only i mean you took out one strike to scorpion so there's only you know i mean if it was me just because i, I do like striking scorpions but again i think maybe it kind of messes with the theme i would maybe take out a striking scorpion put something else in mm. but i don't know i mean they're so cheap so, you know i've i've found that i really enjoy like so I start with one squad in the in the Falcon, but like having the two infiltrator squads has been huge because yeah. I don't have any scouts or anything else. But I feel like those two infiltrator squads have helped a lot. Cause like one of them is like guaranteed gonna die, the other one might live till turn two probably. Right. It's kind of how it's been working out. But at the end of the day, like when the Falcon just rolls up and <laughs> all the scorpions meet together and just kill something, it feels real good too. So. Yeah. No, I think this is a good build. Um, and again, triple warp spider. I like the idea and concept of it. I would. It's so good. I promise you. I mean, I'm sure it's good. I'm just, uh, man, 125 points. I'm always thinking. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Those are it my just goes up and up and up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are my storm guardians plus 25. I should have ran 30 of these these little little bastards. Yeah. At the beginning of the edition. <laughs> For sure, dude. I actually had a list with a squad of ten at the beginning of the edition, and it did really well. I, I've played I've played some games with like two by ten, and I kind of want to play do that to this list. I just can't justify that yeah. quite yet because the Overwatch on a ten pack is gnarly. So you it's just really move good. them somewhere, you get one volley of shooting, and then you tell your opponent to move, and then you get your second volley for free. Well, for one CP. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. But then I guess the target would have to be at least 250 points, right? Right, but you, you can, like, you can, no, well, not necessarily. I mean, like, a, a, you could pincer that target, so put them in a scenario where it's like, if you move to assault me, I kill you. Right. If you shoot me, don't care. Maybe I'll lose a couple spiders. Next turn, I'll kill you. So, or, regardless, like, you phantasm, force them. Right. Yeah, or phantasm. Mm. Both or fire and fade. That fire and fade on the ten pack of spiders feels really good too. Yeah, <laughs> come yeah, up. They move twelve. Come up, shoot two bounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still move twelve. Yep, that's true. Move twenty four. Shoot. Move twelve. Gnarly. Oh, dude, like that is so good. <laughs> that is yeah. so good for getting into people's deployment zones and safety. I mean, Especially with a ten pack, <laughs> like it's crazy. Dude, I mean, even totally even this list, like I consider going instead of three by five, one by ten, one by five, yeah. sort of well, scenario. You can even, I mean, the truth of the matter is, is you can even do it with a squad of because, five. right? But it feels bad a little squad. bit. But if it's the first no, yeah, game yeah, and like yeah, your opponent right. doesn't so have same, an answer, same scenario. But like if you do a squad of five and you're like, oh, I got two dev wounds and that's it, and then they die. I don't know. But if you get like you start getting that six dev wound territory on Overwatch, it feels good. The longer you can keep them alive, the more damage they're just going to rack up throughout the game. So there exactly, has, there exactly. definitely have been some first turns for me where I've moved five up shot something fire and fade yeah exactly done horrible with it and been like i don't want him to die like that fire and fade back exactly that's and that's no problem no yeah. problem perfect really adaptable unit uh, but like yeah it. what i'm saying though you do do the fire and fade with that 10 pack though oh my but yeah it, yeah it is a lot of points now and with the 10 pack if you get caught with your pants down right. they die they die instantly and it feels even way worse so that's why i've kind of been digging the three by five Oh, absolutely, man. 3x5 is is really powerful. I like the concept a lot. I'm going to try yeah. two units in a future list and see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. Well. Try try the two times. Yeah. I, th I think you'll be happy. Absolutely. Okay, 
so I know these are kind of work in progress so let's see you've been kind of working on I've put together a balanced competitive you know quote unquote competitive list for Pry and Nexus and maybe you can give me some feedback on it so I think you've already seen this. I've already shown it to you. I've already seen it. And I, I, Proxy, made a video about it for you. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure. I can't wait to see it, man. You'll have to yeah. show everybody on YouTube as well. I will, I, will, I will tell you a little bit about it, though. Because your list is good. And I liked it a lot because it's very similar to mine. Um. But no, you you have inspired me to kind of delve off and become the grand farseer that I am. And you've given me like I guess the courage to do that. You make your own videos all the time. I love them. A lot of your followers love them. Um and I've enjoyed doing these with you. So I'm yeah, trying to branch off kind of make my own as well, just for funsies really. Um and yeah, my first one is a little interesting one about your list. Well, I'm honored, man. That That's awesome. Honestly, that's awesome. I know you said you had planned to do that. So I'll definitely support whatever you do, man. Honestly. Absolutely. No, I appreciate that. Whatever and... we can do to like kind of bolster the Eldar community. Because we are kind of a, in, in the wider scope of 40k, a smaller community. You know? Absolutely. So we Absolutely. are one of the best, obviously, factions in the game. And I think we deserve some representation. That's all. So, oh yeah, yeah no, I like I said, I appreciate you. Know, yeah, like this is want that to yeah, no, I appreciate that a lot. And and even even just being in your Discord and talking to all those fellows alone, like I have such a great time. And yeah, and again, even just going back to like the uh, mental health aspect of the game and that as a whole, you know, that's helped me exponentially. For sure. And I'm sure it does other people as well. You know, so like. Me doing this is not only helping me, it's like I'm trying to help help everybody learn Eldar and help me and help you, help me. Like just have a good time. Absolutely. I mean, I know from personal experience it's it's basically saved my life where I'm a forty K, not just forty K yeah. in general, but but the Eldar themselves helped me through a rough time when I was like Exa yeah, you know, same. Things were bad, same. you know what I mean? And and yeah. picking up that third edition Eldar book and reading through these like yeah, think, insane yeah, killers, yeah. you know, that the Eldar yeah. did as is in the third edition book. Like it was tight. You yeah, know? take you to a place where you, you know, not yeah. not present. Yeah, you exactly. Know, you don't have sure. to think about absolutely. All the bad stuff. You can just kind of let go of it for you know, absolutely. You know, a and, hours. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. sure. And but yeah, I will definitely talk about your list for a few if you'd like. But I don't want to ruin spoilers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, no worries. I'll just talk about it and maybe talk about why. Yeah, you I, talk about it. I put some of the things in this list that I did. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that might that might help with uh, kind of. So I made some changes to your list that I thought might need to be changed. Interesting. So, I mean, you might be right. You might. But be right. I also I also kind of made my own assumptions on your list of what maybe you were thinking at the time. So. Well, I mean, I can't wait well, to hear well, the video. Yeah, yeah. Let's it's, hear your thoughts. So let me hear your thoughts okay. on your list, though. So. Standard Autark Wayleaper. I actually like the Howling Banshee mask because I like getting my Autark into trouble. He's a dirty one. You know, he, he's kind of gambled his way through the galaxy and he has a lot of enemies. So <laughs> being able to, you know, keep one step ahead of him is important. So I like the Howling Banshee mask. Also, a lot of my opponents like to run, you know, little sneaky melee units and stuff like that. So, you know, having fights first does help sometimes. Phoenix Gem, obviously, as well. I do have the Death Jester in this list as, you know, just standard Fates Messenger Death Jester. I think Death Jesters are going to be really good in Prime Nexus because more people will bring Battle Line like we talked about before. And also, they're a lone operative. And one of the things that I think a lot of people have a misconception about is that lone operatives somehow lost power in Prime Nexus, but they didn't because there's secondaries that require you to survive until the end of the next player's turn, right? And there are some units that we have, like Swooping Hawks and Warp Spiders, who can't necessarily do that. So having a Death Jester, I think, is a good thing, just to be able to do that when you have to, to score on tacticals. Absolutely. And now you're making me second-guess taking out my Death Jester. Uh, 
<laughs> well, no, but, but you have I, the Viper, which can also kind of survive against boulders yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. You know? <sighs> well, <laughs> I, I will say I'll, I will say what I like about the Death Jester in your list proxy is it gives you that third loan app, you yeah. sicko. I love yeah. loan ops, man. I think they're really strong. Autark Wayleaper, loan op, Death Jester, loan op. I do have come a long Zuzu. way from the triple Wayleaper list. Uh. I mean, can <laughs> we even really consider doing the triple wheel? I mean, we can technically, right? I think this this day and age, it's very viable with fixed objectives. For sure, very just, viable. And I, would even say I think that was like a tournament too, probably. Interesting. That's actually that is interesting. I, I'm. I'm wondering about I'm curious about that. I I my my list that I have, I I've written versions of it with Triple Way Leaper. And it seems to seems like it could be real good. I don't know. But it probably could. It probably could. They didn't get a points increase. So the other two Way Leapers are just one fifteen still. Right. right. But but I'm saying keeping fixed objectives in your mind. Yeah, you know, that that's why we're playing that list. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely have but to the problem play is that. The problem I found with fixed is sometimes you run it run into an opponent who completely obliterates that plan. Yeah. So that forces you to run tactical. And if you're running your list mainly fixed, it's a little harder to play tactical yeah. to some degree. And it kind of degrades the whole thing um as a whole. But I think we're in a weird place now, since everything's kind of going to MSU, that we can handle that we can play tactical or fix that we could build that way i think we can just haven't figured it out yet yeah absolutely i mean for example in these games that i played with this list i played tactical but i'm starting to see that fixed might be a good answer viable to yeah a lot of like more difficult opponents mm -hmm. so. and, and like, you, can, you can build your list in such a way where you can literally score, you can max secondary every game. It'd be almost impossible not to, oh, I absolutely, feel. absolutely, man. I, the secondary um, game, we've never had trouble with it, but... Yeah, primary is... Yeah. Even more so now. But like, at, at, the, at this point now, though, like you can, if you wanted to, you can max your secondary every game and not even think twice about it. Yeah, and then do a secret mission for... For primary, for right, which is also cool because okay, we're by, built by into way, that. By the way, I did, in fact, do secret missions in both of the first games I played, and I did them on purpose. Now, as you guys know, you have to be losing to do it. So you have to be losing in primary points, is what my understanding mm. is. So you let your opponent on turn two, cap 10, and you cap five. You get one objective, they get two. That's the only way to do it, because scoring starts on turn two, right? So turn three yeah. comes around, you have to declare if you're doing a secret mission or not. So you declare it at that point. Now, there's yeah. two strong ones that the Eldar can do very well, and it's surprising. If you go second, Unbroken Wall is almost a guaranteed victory if you play safe with most of your units. So you don't take unnecessary risks and stuff like that. You can get all three middle objectives at the end of the game by destroying enemy units and then jumping on the objectives with things like fire and fade and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The other one is command insertion, which is your Autark Way Leaper with the Phoenix Gem, right? And you can score that. It, it helps to go second, but if you go first, you can still do it because you have the Phoenix Gem, you have the Howling Banshee Mask. So if somebody does charge you, and it's like, you know, a unit of like five scouts or something like that. Your Autark Waylooper has a decent chance of between the Dragon Fusion Gun and the Star Glaive. And like, you, you know, you're going to yeah. pour all your resources into this to make sure it survives. It dies. Yeah, it completely right? dies. For sure. Yeah, for sure, dude. To make sure that it, it, it doesn't get contested. So, yeah, Autark Waylooper, extremely Absolutely. good for, for that secret mission. And yes, I did score one on Unbroken Wall, which was against my... Dark Angel's opponent, and he was, well, <laughs> not that happy because, again, he thought I was going to go for command insertion because I had the Autark Wayleaper kind of in a position where it kind of looked like it would do that. But nope, I chose Unbroken Wall because I had a bunch of Wind Riders, and I'll talk about the rest of my list in just a second. Uh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool that we could be so cheeky like that. It, 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 it was, it was gotcha. nice. Gotcha. It won't work a second time. He he will expect it, but there's not much he can do about it. 
Yeah, but you're in a tournament playing against somebody you don't know. Absolutely. If you're playing, absolutely. If you're playing against somebody in a tournament, you, you bluff them hard like that. that. That's that's a sick move. Yep. You know, it's funny. On the case of secret missions, my opponent, as well as a couple of other people, have mentioned that it's cheese. And I don't think it is, personally. Really? Yeah. And, they, and, and, and again, these are players that typically complain about stuff. But there is a growing sense, I think, in some parts of the community, in some particular armies, that they think secret missions are cheese because they don't have yeah, a good play imagine. into them. You know, yeah. they can only do Unbroken Wall, and everything else is really right. hard for them. And they're saying, well, I, I, secret missions I've heard of, I, I've heard of guys in your Discord saying, like, okay, the Avatar is my warlord, and they're doing the secret missions with the Avatar. Nice. That's I nuts. I, I think it's viable as well. Like, sure. If the Avatar survives, it definitely can be. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He's a big old. Yeah. I mean, you're never going to. If you can get that guy he's on turn pain. five into the enemy, there's nothing they can do. They've lost. Right. Right. I would even go so far as to say they probably have no models left. <laughs> yeah. True. But I mean, there you go. Okay. But so, yeah, no, that's, that's definitely interesting. It doesn't happen before you score primary on turn three. Or does it happen after you score primary? Answer That's actually three? a good question. I think it's I because think it's I after. think that changes things for me. I think it, so if you if you could score primary on turn two and three, it might be at the start of the turn though. Yeah, I think it's at the start of the turn. Yeah, so I, you score primary on turn two. Mm -hmm. So probably on average, you'll score two of them, two objectives. Right. I'd say on turn two, mm -hmm. and then you're looking at twenty points for the rest of the game. Yep, for primary. So, so you're looking at thirty primary? Well, yeah, roughly? instead, well, no, 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 forty primary, possibly, right? Because you you have to. Oh, be okay. Tied so you would you would score losing. on turn three then? Yeah, you have to be tied or losing. You can still score primary in in the normal way, by the way. Oh, throughout the rest of the game? Absolutely, of course, you can still score on primary. Oh, so you could just do that and still just yes. score your primary. Oh, yes, so why don't we just do that every time? Exactly, but you're limited to 40 instead of 50 total, right? So you lose out oh. automatically on 10. But that's the only oh, disadvantage. Oh my, you just, you just changed my whole scope proxy. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> would it, I, mean, I mean, that would be terrible. No one would take the secret mission if they could only score five primary in the beginning and then, you know, plus the 20, which is, that would be terrible. No, no, I, I thought you could score the first, like, two turns primary and then you just capped to that 20 from the secret mission. No, you score 20 primary fact. victory points from that secret mission, but you can still also score in the regular way. But it's going to so be can, hard as Eldar to do that. So, you, But you can still max primary taking the secret mission, you're saying? You can, but only up to 40 points. They do They do say that you can only score a maximum of 40 points for primary. Oh, okay. So, so you can sit there, still score primary like regular all yep. game, and then all of a sudden get an extra 20. But right. you're maxed at forty. Right. So you're you're not capped at fifty, gotcha. which is the normal. So so you yeah. can score ninety. Ah. You can score so you, 90. you you basically sack ten points. Yeah, we should do that every game. Most <laughs> like I don't know. We, I we should so. literally do that because we also are game. rated denying primary from our opponents. Because yeah, because we, we just shoot lists. them way off of that primary. Yep. Oh yeah, we, yeah we. Yeah, you know, we house them off of it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the play. Just take that secret almost every game, because then it fucks with your opponent's head the whole time. Yep, and it forces them to make moves that they probably. Make, it make forces moves. them to make decisions. We're back to making decisions. I yep, love it. Which is great. Which means the elder. That, that forces them to make a lot of decisions. Actually. I definitely agree. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's, my mind. there's certain armies out there, there's certain players out there who will say it's cheese because they just don't have an answer to it, and they'll say... Yeah. Know, I've even I've even gone so far as to hear people say, you know, they'll, they'll cheat, you know? Like, people will cheat and hide cards, and... Come on. I mean, really? <laughs> I mean, people are bringing... You know, people at tournaments bring loaded dice, and, and I guarantee yeah. you, every once in a while someone gets caught, not everybody gets caught. Yeah, I recently realized that somebody cheated against me at a tournament, and yeah, I mean, they bring did not loaded, feel good. They bring loaded dice to the did game. not feel good because it's like I I try to play this game as honest as I can be, right? You know, because it's a very complex game, 
and we all spend a lot of time, effort, money, all of it into it. Like, why even bother cheating? Like, right. honestly, this game is for probably your above average intelligent person, you know, like they like to play the game, or maybe they just like the models, but they don't play competitively. That's cool too. But like to go and cheat, those people aren't cheating. The guys that don't care if they win or lose, they're not cheating. These right. competitive guys are cheating. Absolutely. For what reason? To what end? For what reason? Well, you know, all you're doing is disgracing the community. I agree. I absolutely agree. I think cheating obviously is deplorable in the game, and and you shouldn't do that. Um, but people do it because no, they no exactly. Win, yeah. And people will go yeah. to those lengths. But you know, I don't think people are going to cheat with this. And there's a there's an easy fix for you guys out there who are afraid of this at tournaments that people will hide the card or maybe you know like I don't know there's some sort of like card shark or something they have like cards up their sleeve whatever it is all you have to do is bring a use the app you could use the app or yeah i mean bring your own cards bring bring a set of cards and bring a kind of a opaque sleeve with them kind of like a magic sleeve but opaque on both sides you put the you pick the secret mission from your cards obviously secretly you put it in the card sleeve you tape the card sleeve over so that no one can get to it and you put like maybe a little mark on it or something like that uh, what about this one on the table. what about this one hey to this is my secret mission take it oh that could work if the to you know i feel like that could work yeah <laughs> if you, if, well, if you, you know you call to over, over over any time right yeah for sure <laughs> absolutely i don't know if you'd be able to handle like 50 secret missions but well I mean, you know not everybody's he, playing secret missions that's so. his problem right not mine <laughs> For sure, man. I just don't think people are going to cheat with it. That's just my opinion. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have the secret mission, you put it on on the table somewhere. Like, yeah. there yeah. it is. You know what it's like? It reminds there me it of is. the game. Have you ever played Clue? It reminds me of that. Yeah, absolutely, right? yeah. You put the card in the beginning of the game. No one looks at it because that ruins the whole game, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, there are cheaters. That's true. But if you can tape, tape it over so that they can't see it, they can't look at it, whatever, then how are they going to find I out? I wonder... What if you uh, take an index card and you write it down or something? Like, you write it. So, like, here's the index card. I wrote it. Absolutely. Right there. I mean... So, or, I don't know. I guess maybe sure we should find some way to solve it, this. But... Right, exactly. That's the other thing. Yeah, you can put a... You can fold it, put a mark on it, and say, this is what it is, and put it in your jacket. That's it. Your opponent yeah. can't look at it at that point, and your opponent knows it has a mark, so you can't change it. That's... Or, or, it is. Uh, yeah, index card, you write it down, you put the index card face down, have opponent sign the back end of it. That's another great idea. So opponent puts their signature on the thing. Right. You can't argue that, right? Absolutely not. And then you could put it away in your jacket pocket, and that's it. There, There's ways that you can prevent people from cheating at that. Very easy. Yeah. Very easy. Very, very, um, you know, concerning at first first thought but something that it's easily get absolutely anyway okay so on with the list we have four of course farcer skyrunner farcer skyrunner will go with the wind riders and solitaire now the solitaire is another great option for not only secondaries but for fights first it's a great you know heroic intervening unit if you're going against something with a lot of melee and you can't really push up the board because you got you know you got second turn the solitaire can be put in a position to support your other units that might get charged. The solitaire, guys, is a mass murdering machine. It has nine attacks. Strength six, AP minus two. It will kill most space marine units that charge in. That's a fact. Absolutely. You know, and and if if you want to take the fight to the enemy, he can kill a character with a blitz. He can kill a whole unit of space marines. I had a game with the solitaire actually recently against chaos space marines before the changes mm-hmm. where he killed like eight legionaries by himself yeah he's great you know absolutely he's amazing and he didn't change in points he didn't get nerfed so you know 115 for that guy i think is still really good yeah i think i think that's another example of like a, a unit that's really good unit and maybe i don't want to play it but maybe you really like that unit you can put it in your list no problem He's you know what I mean? And anybody could, but it's like, do you like it or not? You know what I mean? It's just another one of those units where yeah. it's good enough to fit in any list if you wanted to. 
Absolutely. And it has a lot of finesse, and that's why I like about it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, absolutely. it's extremely hard to use, but if you know how to use it and hide it, it's very small. Very I, easy yeah. to hide. Same I feel about spiders, yeah. Yep. They, yep. Exactly the same. Corsair Void Reavers. I have them in the list because I wanted to try out how good they were with Battle Line. That's it. I, I honestly yep. think there may yeah. have been better I, I kinda, choices, but I kinda figured that was your goal with that, but uh Yep, just wanted yep. to try it out. I didn't even think, I mean, you know, do I think a Corsair unit is going to be the most competitive battle line? I don't know. I, I wanted to see if it was true. Now, they, was made they did okay. They scored an objective. In one game, they charged and killed a couple. They killed like three Space Marines out of an Infiltrator unit. They did all right. Mm -hmm. You know? I think the yeah. scout move throws people off, the seven-inch scout, because they're not expecting it. So if you get first turn, scout seven, move seven, charge seven, your you know threat range is like 21, 22 inches, which is really good. Absolutely. You know, but they are seventy points, and a lot of people do bring that up, like you know, proxy hammer. They're seventy points, but they're kind of expensive. They're almost as expensive as you know, a unit of. You know, super yeah, well, or or you know, scorpions it's are viper. cheaper. Yeah, right. It's it's exactly right. Scorpions are cheaper, rangers are cheaper. So I do get that, but they are battle line. Yeah, and... try it out. Try it out. Yeah, the yeah. battle line is a big thing here, and I I feel like we can get away in Pride Nexus without it. Yeah, it's obviously so. a, a good thing, but like at the same time, I don't think we necessarily are forced to need it. Not necessarily, Dead especially with how good we are in. Um, secret missions secret apparently missions. Oh, yeah. yeah no for sure so i don't the yeah i don't think it's a about, force so yeah that's cool. I, I think really what it is with this squad is 50 percent of the time if you draw a battle line mission rule they will be good All right if you don't they're just going to be a cheap fodder unit and and you gotta you gotta live with that I that's another thing I'm kind of, people yeah. with that, you know right and that's another thing i'm kind of waiting for with my list really if yeah. i take battle line or not is I want to see the player packet. Yep. I want to see it's going to be what missions I'm going to be playing. Yeah. Well, because if, if there is battle line missions, I, I will consider taking one battle line unit. That's right. kind of where I'm at yep. in my mind. I think that's what a lot of players will end up doing because I, I mean, the truth is the tournament can look at those battle line specials and be like, oh, that's way too broken. You know, right. Let's just do ones without it. Let's pick some like kind of more like. You know, balanced mission rules and maybe exactly. they leave yeah. out a lot of the better ones. For sure. And, and I, I, I appreciate that. Like, there should be troops on the battlefield, if that makes sense. Right. You know, like, they belong there. That should be the majority of most people's armies. That's just how the game works anymore. Right. Which is cool. I prefer it that way, honestly. Run whatever you want. I mean, truthfully, um, that was kind of never how the game was. I mean, you remember... Oh, you, had, you were forced to take troops. Yeah, I you mean, were did you to ever, take troops. Did though. you ever take more than two minimum units? No, never. I only took it because I had to. Absolutely, man. I mean, like, I remember back yeah. in, in 5th edition with the, uh, you know, Mechdar spam, I mean, Wave Serpent spam, no one ever took more than, like, what they had to. They took three units of dragons and Wave Serpents, <laughs> you know. They took two units of Dire Avengers minimum and Wave Serpents, and then they took, like, three Fire Prisms or something like that. They were never taking anything more than that, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and I think... I think if I am forced to take one, I'm probably going to take uh, Defenders, though, just so I have the Bright Lands. That is nice. Of course. Because I, I don't see myself. I know, because... I know. I don't, I don't see myself using the sticky objectives like everybody else does. I just yeah. don't see myself doing that. Like, I'll sit my, store, my Defenders on my home objective and just shoot Bright Land shots at you. Mm -hmm. But the minute I send this 10 bag of Storm Guardians out, they're just going to die. Well, exactly, you know. they are going to die, but with great glory. <laughs> with with the glory of the Eldari, Craft World man. Friends. Absolutely, Craft World Friends, dude. Like, they are the Craft World Friends. I mean, I, I just really like them. The two fusion guns they have. The yeah, two they do flamers, have the two fusion guns. Yeah. You know, I, they pop <sighs> Marines way better than Guardian yeah, Defenders they, do. Yeah, they are good for cleaning up the little chaff five mans, for absolutely. sure. They're great I'll give you that. I, you they know, have an involved. Absolutely. They have a 5 plus invul, which makes a difference on a unit with a 4 plus armor save. For sure, you for know? sure. It's not like on I, Wraith Seer, which it's like almost useless on, you know? But I would also take the defenders just to get 
fade dice. The fade dice of it. Yeah. Like yeah, no, I no, feel I, like I feel like that's sure. probably to me that's more important than sticky objectives for our army. For sure. Especially if you already have something in the backfield that's gonna be sitting on the objective anyway. Like if exactly. You know that, yeah. I, I'd rather my guard I'd rather my guardian sit there than my way leaper sure. or whoever, my far seer, you know. I'd rather the guardian just sit there throwing bright land shot down the alley collecting right. fake dice than anybody else, I guess. Oh, for sure. I totally agree. I mean, usually in, in most games with my Storm Guardians against Marine players, I'm advancing these guys right off the bat. Sticking yeah. the objective, swooping hawks or Bowser, screening, yeah. you know, so yeah. I don't have to worry about it. But they're not out in the open, so they can just get shot at. So it, it makes oh. sense for this list. But yeah, it no, doesn't proxy, work I, Trust me, I know you could write an entire encyclopedia on how Storm, Storm Guardians <laughs> work, so... They're awesome. I don't know. But uh, Storm Guardians, <laughs> they're there. I got Double Falcon. Double Falcon. I'm in. I'm, I'm in, it. obviously. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm also running. Yep. you got to have Double Falcon because you have Double Fire Dragons, which yeah, I like yep. putting in the Falcons because they just shred vehicles like no other with the, when they're in Falcons. Yep. There's going to be a lot of transports in the game carrying, what do you think? Battle Line Marines. So gotta have the fire <laughs> oh yeah big time people have asked me about this oh i remember the beginning of the edition so many people would argue with me that fire dragons were not good at killing vehicles and i would just say uh, on what? average dice out of a falcon they kill something with toughness 10 or 11 very easily because of the wounds count that those vehicles typically have and then yep. against anything tougher than that they need the Falcon to support them, but they will still obviously kill it. And I play Eldar and I cheat and I have fake dice. And so I have fake dice, you exactly. Go. And I have rerolls and I have <laughs> and rerolls and rerolls and more rerolls. Yeah, so. so fire dragons can kill that. They can't kill a land raider on their own, but come on. I mean I mean land raiders are a little bit of a different story. Proxy side note. Yeah. Althwe, their ability is gonna be you can re-roll the re-roll. Yes. Let's That's go. right. Dude. <laughs> hey, man, I've always said it. The most fun factions are the ones that break the rules of the game. The, right. Facts. Those are the those are the factions that I, I'm interested in playing, and Eldar can definitely do that. So I have two yeah, fire double... dragon units. Obviously, everybody knows these these guys are great against more than just tanks and, and monsters and stuff. They're good against heavy infantry. Terminators. Like, oh my god, they just eat terminators. Oh, absolutely. Eat it's them. like four plus or die. You know. No. Yep. Very good. I mean, 10 of these guys can melt a unit of five Terminators pretty reliably. With yeah, a little and bit you of got your points support. back plus. Yep, absolutely. So they can die in peace. Uh, <laughs> so they if can they die don't die, that, then that's your fault, opponent. If, if they don't die, after that, <laughs> that means one or two things. You did a really good job making sure all the other threats were cleaned up, or they just made a big oops, you know, either way. No, for sure. I do. I don't care, fire dra fire dragon X arc with fire pike just rolling down the battlefield by himself pumps me the fuck up. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I've had one half shot a land raider before. Just my, la my last board. game, my last game is wagon, and then the X arc just rolling down the battlefield by themselves. They're, they're just bros. getting it done. With just two fire, two giant fucking fire beams. <laughs> I love that. Oh man, the fire pike is so good. It was I mean, so epic. Do you, do you it think they, it, it uh, looks absolutely ridiculous? Like, why is Flagon's gun bigger than a bright lance? Like, it's hilarious. Well, obviously, he's overcompensating <laughs> for something, right? Oh, His man. big balls? I don't know. I mean, he's a fire dragon. I mean, you know. <laughs> All right, so we have Shroud Runners then, in the list. Yep. And uh, Lethal so, Hit Goodness, he, you know. I was going to say, uh, toward the end of your list, you were almost there. The Shroud Runners are literally there, I'd imagine, because they're your giant Wind Rider squad. Yes. They're like there you, for that. If you're running the giant Wind Rider squad, you have to have at least one Shroud Runner. If not, do not run the giant Wind Rider squad, I'd say. Yeah, probably run them not. Smaller, I mean, maybe. They're still good. Or... Uh, yeah, know, but we're run them not as the nine pack Death Star, you know, that they are. Probably because the not. Shroud Runners. Shroud Runners exponentially increase their damage, I feel. Yeah, they're they're definitely a bursty unit. I mean And they make it so, the Shroud Runners make it so they can shoot at whatever the heck they want. Yep. Whatever they want at all. They just shoot at. Absolutely. Totally agree. They're they're really strong. 
Um, and they're good on their own. They're good at screening if they if you need them for that. Like, let's say you go into a matchup where the lethal hits isn't going to matter, then they can screen for you. They can lethal hit their own damage. You know what I mean? So they can shoot extra good. Um, because they do come with scatter lasers, so they're pumping out 18 shots plus the range of long rifles. So on average, you'll get three or maybe even four lethal hits out of it, which means you are going to, you know, force some saves on something. So they can even help themselves a little bit. And at the same time, block an important unit from actually being able to do anything. So I, I really like this unit as well. Skyweavers I have in this list, and they're there to finish off enemy vehicles, you know, like those big land raiders that the fire dragons can't quite take out. Skyweavers can clean that up. So that's why I have the Skyweavers in the army. Other than that, they have Starbolas. I perhaps, I don't know. I like the Starbolas into this meta just because I figure they're better against Marines, but, you know, could be wrong on that. I think mostly it's because I already have enough combat in this list, in my opinion, so I don't really need more. So just... Yeah, no, I, your, list, your list overall is really cool. I, I had a hard time making changes to it. I didn't really make many, but I'm going to save those for these fellas to watch. Yes, absolutely. I'll watch it too, man. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm pumped. I, I can't thank you enough for uh, having me on. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm I'm happy to have you on because you have interesting ideas and, and we always on your have channel fun talking, and you know? kind of introducing me. Oh yeah, definitely. And and um, you know, there's there's very few Eldar YouTubers out there and the ones that there are, you know, including yourself, I feel are like kind of pillars to our community and I've been playing Eldar for a long time and I kinda wanna be be there too, you know. I wanna be respected in the community in that way and I hope I'm on the same track as you to some degree. Well, I already respect you, so there we go. <laughs> Fuck winning. Oh man, I don't know if you want my respect for the, the dirty, cheesy Eldar player. But... <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> I mean, what do you think I am? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to cheat with you. Master, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so here's the scorpions, right? So scorpions are great. You got to have at least one infiltrating unit in your army, at least. So scorpions are my go-to for that, and we know why. They're great. Devastating wounds can chip down a few units, make them easier to kill. They can engage tanks sometimes to hold them up. It just really depends what your opponent lets them do, basically. So, yeah, really good unit there. Swooping Hawks. Just one yeah, we unit. talked. We hit, we, hit, yep, we hit that on the head. I think we yep. both kind of agree. Just having the one is probably think, cool. yeah, okay. That's absolutely. okay. Absolutely. I think you probably just need one unit. And if you guys go back and think about, you know, the post September data slate when all the, you know, D weapons and stuff got nerfed and all that stuff, or at least, you know, the Wraith Knight took another hit and people weren't running that anymore, people started running a single unit of Swooping Hawks at 75 points and Triple Warp Spider. And that, you know, over the course of time. Why here we are. <laughs> you know, I mean, here we are back yeah. to the one swooping hawk, right? So swooping hawk's yep. really good. I have just, one just for that, that, mm -hmm. that that ability alone to jump off the table. You know that one unit, you're going to make them safe the entire game. Agreed. You know, you're going to make them safe. You're going to make them score turn five <laughs> yep. for no ungodly reason, but there they are to save save the day, maybe, you okay. know. I told you. Having that one, 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 one by five, I think at least probably one. It's it's just enough to, like you said, be able to yeah. With the with the point with the point increase, yeah, like running two is a little harder. I yeah. I agree with that. You know, in, if you build your list in such a way like you have and I kind of have, you, I think you get away with a one X. Yeah, I I agree, and and I'd rather have a viper. <laughs> like I'd rather right. have another viper in the list, which is right here. So Viper, Bright Lance gets rid of cover for you, yep. especially powerful on Fire Dragons, which... I think, I think that's kind of what's going to happen. Safe. That's kind of what's going to happen to Brian next. We're going to shade away that kind of second Hawk Squad or that third Hawk Squad, insert Viper, save another 10 points or something else. Right. You know, I think Absolutely. that's a good move. Yep. I totally agree with that. And then I have a Warp Spider. Just one. Yeah. Just for, you know, kind of 
again, it can it can overwatch if something kind of more chaff like gets into your deployment zone. It can it's really good against other Eldar and Dark Eldar that want to like deep strike Mandrakes next to you or some yeah you know, and, and try to, yeah try to BS you yeah yep, absolutely and and they just say no hell no to that and they just wipe you out. So warp spiders are a good utility tool in a lot of the lists that I run, and they're yeah. really good in Pry Nexus for scoring. So I have one unit in here. Couldn't quite make the points for two, but I'll try a list with them. Maybe I'll shave a couple things off. I I I think you'll like the second one, Proxy. I have some reasons in in my video of of why I think you went the way you did, which I think is also interesting, by the way. So like, kind of shaving that second squad of hawks also might give you that extra points to have that second squad of spiders or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. You know. But at the end of the day, they all went up in points. So, like, running a 1x5 Spider, 1x5 Hawk, 1x5 Scorpion, that is just base utility for Eldar armies. Totally agree. And that's where and, I'm going with this list. It's just, yeah, exactly. just using enough to get the job done, and that's it. Balanced. Yeah. And, and also, it kind of shows me, this will give me some good practice and insights as the meta develops on what is going to be, you know, soon to be obsolete. Because the meta obviously is going For to change, sure. and sure. some units may be, be, you know, kind of useless. Like, I may decide, going back to the Corsairs, that they're not as good as I thought they were. And I might cut yep. those for something else, like Howling Banshees. Wind Riders, of course, bring up the last part of the list. And, you know, well, what do I say about them except they just demolish things? Right? Yeah, I, I, I do want to say, when you build around them, the, when you want to run a 9-pack, you kind of have to are forced to build around them a little more in your entire list. Right. They are as a big opposed investment. to running via six pack or three packs, you know, three packs, you just let them go off, do whatever six packs. You're like, okay, maybe I have a little more expensive of a unit running with the far seer. They're going to be a little, a little more techie, but you want to keep them more safe. And the nine pack. You're like, here's the whole death star. Yeah. And these guys, I mean, can even one shot vehicles, you know, I absolutely. Mean, absolutely. Rhinos. You know, yeah, if you, if you, if you, get, if you combo, you, yeah, you combo them off, <laughs> the, whatever's on the receiving end, and it doesn't really matter what it is, yeah. not going to enjoy it. Yeah, they can shave wounds off of almost anything, so they're really good. I have them, and they're, they're going to be, you know, primarily fire and fading and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's the list. I was pretty happy with its performance for the most part. Again, I think the only thing I would change about it right now is the Corsairs, perhaps, because... Yeah, you said you, yeah. said you, you told me you lost the game. Um, like, what were the stipulations behind that? No, I won both of my games. Oh, you did win? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I won both Never the mind. games, but the, the Corsairs didn't perform like I thought they were going to perform. Ah, I got you. Um, in the first game, they, you know, advanced and scored a secondary objective because I, we had that mission rule. But in the second game, there was no battle line mission rule bonus. So yeah, they fair. didn't get it. So they just kind of charged into a unit of, you know, I think it was infiltrators and killed like three of them. And that's it. And I mean, they kind of made up their points for it. Yeah, yeah, but... still not bad there. You know, I not mean, ideal. Not a, not what you're looking for. Not sort what of I'm thing. looking for in the unit. Yeah. I mean, a, a unit of banshees, for example, same, same yeah. boss could wipe out that unit. It, with yeah, with arguably a longer um, one turn threat range. Right. Very true. Yeah, eight inch movement. Well, advanced six and yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of the same. It, it's, advanced it's six charge. Yeah. With a fate dice, which I didn't use. I used. The stratagem. Yeah, I would not use fate dice on Corsairs, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you build a Corsair army, which I think... Which I did. I think there's potential. Yeah, in the beginning of the edition, I ran a Corsair list, and I think it's good. And by the way, anybody... I, I think it could be good in, now, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a sec exceptionally good now. And I think it's, exactly, it's much yeah. better than it's ever been. So if you're if you're still yeah, have maybe, that plan yeah. of rocking corsairs and wave serpents well, and falcons, definitely do it because we should, we should figure we uh, we should figure that out, figure that list out together soon. We should, dude. That should. I be think it'd be neat. Yeah. That should be another video. Corsairs think, are always so cool. Like you, you have to have the prince. So you have to have the prince. Prince Riel and his Eldritch Raiders. You gotta have it. It's oh so my cool. god. Yeah, like, let's really do that. <laughs> First of all, when I was playing that list, I had a blast, even though I was proxying more than half of it. I had a really fun time. 
Yeah, well, who owns 60 Corsairs? <laughs> yeah, well, some people out there. Don't Not me it. yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should. You should get on that, man. <laughs> I wish they would let the Corsairs... Because the Corsairs, they cannot ride in Raiders, correct? Correct. They can only ride in Raiders. Ride in Eldar, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, But in your list, you could put them in a Falcon if you wanted. Absolutely. Correct. All right. I All could. right. But they suck in a Falcon. I don't think it's worth it. I think they're, they... <laughs> <laughs> they're horrible in it, man. I, options. I... Options. I mean, yeah, I guess they could be in a Falcon, but they can't even scout if they're in a Falcon. So, so pro- I, I did want to bring up Proxy a moment. I think I already probably did, but like with the Fire Dragons in the Falcon, I won. I run only one squad in the Falcon. Yeah. The other squad and strat reserve, and that works out for me so much. If you can just kind of like, if you have that in your mind, like they're just gonna meet up yeah. and just nuke something together. Falcon, fire dragons, more fire dragons on a strat reserve. Oh my, there's ten fire dragons there magically. Yeah. Th- two fire pikes and the man of fire himself. <laughs> like, oh for sure. I mean, the reason why I start them both in the falcons because i can put characters in it too so i can put fuegan in it although i'm right. not always putting fuegan in it believe it or not sometimes yeah, i just have I, them I, off the side yeah so running them separate yeah for sure you have that option you can but put go fire dragon solitaire in there if you want solitaire it. and yeah. death jester death jester me, yeah death jester's gnarly in there gives me a huge amount of not only damage but it gives me i really want to play death jester and magan raw in a boat oh that'd be cool Death it's gotta be so good. And Magen Ra with just a, like a shooty items. boat. How about we just have all the fe- most of the Phoenix Lords in a no, boat no, no. together? No, but like I just a shooty boat. So like the boat's hanging out and like pops out dudes. Yeah, and he's just shooting like <laughs> death at whatever exists. Just whatever. That's and then the dudes funny. get back in next that's turn, and then you just go funny. off and shoot something else. That's funny. That's gotta be that's gotta be good. Just a shooty boat because like the the boats like the fire dragon like when you're r- r- rolling with fire dragons the boat has to be pretty close <laughs> you know right and when the boat's pretty close the boat explodes right well I but mean, if, the, if the boat's far away just dealing death yeah maybe it has a chance well sometimes I put what are you gonna, are you gonna, gonna shoot the things. boat the death jester the mangan ra or whatever else is in there yeah <laughs> like right. Could be neat. I don't know. No, that's 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 a really good idea. I think you should try it out. I think Mog and Raw Yeah, you're gonna is make me try out the jank. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, look what your list is called. I mean, let's go back up and and, and check out. Oh, ah, here list. we go. Here we go. What what is it called? Um, Salt City Junk. junk. Which, by the way, there's yeah. nothing junk about this list. It's very, I, uh, it's very. Elite. I like to I, I like to name my lists off of Magic the Gathering decks. Oh, uh, that's why it's called Junk. I don't even know what that Magic the Gathering deck does. So, yeah. So, like, Junk is just like, here's a bunch of random shit. Let's make it work, right? That's yeah. kind of the same that that these Eldar lists are. Like, here's a bunch of shit. Let's make it all work together. God, I, I and combo somebody, off. Yeah. So, like, that's kind of that's kind of why I named it Junk. Yeah, that makes sense. I had a buddy in college who had a quote unquote Junk Magic the Gathering list and. Yeah, see, had a yeah, bunch yeah. of random shit, including a Venus exactly. from Pokemon. So there's that. Yeah, so now I've evolved. I have a Lynx in there. So like, we got a bunch of junk in there. I don't yeah. know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's good, cool, man. I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I've named them Tron and um, Storm. You know, like that's my way to name lists. It's kind of fun, and I don't know. Yeah, no, it kind sure. of works out too with how Aldar is. Like, oh, big time, yeah. <laughs> I think they could but, definitely be a Magic the Gathering archetype. They'd be like yeah, blue, blue or something. It, it, yeah, definitely blue. We're going to counterspell everything. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, God, dude. I, I remember when I played Magic the Gathering, I basically hated my life at, at the Friday Night Magic events. I'd always get dead last. <laughs> I was never willing to spend any money on the deck. People were like, why don't you buy this card? I'm like, oh, how much is it? They're like $50. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Nah, I'll proxy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw a little card in my sleeve, and they're like, well, you can't do that at Friday Night Magic. And I was like, then why would I do it? Then why would I even play like that card? 
I might as well find something that wins without it. So I had a couple of different like basic twenty dollar or less decks that were just like basically bargain bin decks that you could just buy. <laughs> and I remember I'd get last every time. And this one time I was I was last place with this other player, and she was dead last as well. And we're playing against each other, and it was whoever lost gets a free pack. So they basically get their money back essentially for the Friday Night Magic. And I remember playing against this person. <laughs> And it was hard to try to lose. I was oh, no. trying my best to lose because I wanted that back. And I think she was also doing the same thing because she was playing the worst cards in, in the wrong order. And I was like, she is doing this on purpose. <laughs> so like That's we ended great. up so it ends up that I finally just like I lost because I just decided not to play any cards. And I was like, <laughs> I was like trying to see like how far she would take trying. You should have just cheated, I guess, at I that like, point. Well, I was like, I looked at my hand, <laughs> I, I could, I could play a couple things, and I was like, oh man, I can't really play anything. Past turn, past turn. turn, yeah, past mm -hmm. turn. I have too much mana. It's a, it's a mana flood out here. And uh, she was like, okay, I attack you for one, raging goblin. I'm like, <laughs> it was past the worst. It was like, yeah, past turn. <laughs> and I was like, oh, just. Pull out a planeswalker and destroy me or something. It was funny. Right. But that's why you gotta have patience because at the end of those twenty long turns of the raging goblin attacking every turn, right? I finally Oof. won, and I was like, I can't believe I didn't draw a single and good card. That's how much patience we need to have with our warp spiders. That's exactly the lesson there. <laughs> I got the pack, and it had nothing in it, which is the other lesson. Which is sometimes it's better to just not. <laughs> Especially with Eldar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do not put that unit there. It yes. will die. Yep. Anytime you move your units, just realize what's going to be shooting at them, they will die. Absolutely. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. They will die. <laughs> You know what's funny though? I actually enjoy that because, you know, people will it, have no, like all these stratagems that they're using and stuff. Like, I just like yeah. they're going to die anyway. Like, you, you, I yeah. have to tell people, yeah. like, they yeah, are waste tough that. three. Waste gonna die. Yeah, I don't really yeah. want people wasted if I'm playing a semi-competitive game with my buddies. For I, sure, I tell them, "Hey, man, they're toughness." Com competitive though, play. competitive though. Like you see my list, you know it all has T three. We're in this tournament. For sure, yeah. you understand in this tournament that Eldar has T three. Imperial Guard has T three. There's a battle T three. Like yeah, I think Dark you Eldar T three. Yep, exactly. So I. Besides telling you at the beginning of the game, everything has T3, the rest of it's on you. <laughs> I totally agree. And yeah, I probably wouldn't say anything in a, in a really excuse me, competitive sense like that. Yeah. yeah. I, even in like like GTs, I will, I, I'm very reasonable. Uh, that's how I like to play because I don't want an opponent, I don't want my opponent to get me either, you know? Right. So if, you, if you're open, like obviously we have each other's lists, but like, I don't play against Chaos Knights every day. You know what I yeah. mean? So like, oh, your ar your army rule is this. Cool. This is what everything does. But I have a general knowledge of what the units are, so I'm not going to, you know, I know what I can do against it. But opponents should have the same sort of thing. If you have a question, I'll answer it. I ask a lot of questions when I play because I don't know the answers to, like, your units. I don't know what they do half Absolutely. the time. Agreed. You know, so... Yeah. During gameplay, and I do this a lot on opponent's turn, I'll ask him, because on opponent's turn, I'm trying to figure out how to kill them on my turn. Right. You know, so I'll ask some questions on their turn, waste their time a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the art of being able to do something and then also answer the question at the same time is something. Right, right. Have to to. <laughs> like... But. God, I remember when, when I was playing tournaments in 5th edition and the first game I ever played, I ran out of time. And it was the worst feeling. I was like, never again. And I... I yeah, yeah, to... no. Because yeah. the guy was asking me a lot of questions and I was over-explaining them and like, you know, telling right. him all of it. And we're, you know, joking around. And I come to learn that, no, oh, well, this guy was just yeah, death clock. Competitive up. Warhammer, there's a yeah. huge psychology part to it. It's oh, nuts. Sure. He, so he, nobody he ever talks me. about it, but there is. Yep. He definitely got me. He got me to the point where I couldn't win because I didn't have any time left. I was like, oh, okay. So I learned. Yeah. I learned then. 
never do that. Just answer it's, it's, while you go. It's funny. You learn something new every single game. Every single game. Yep, every defeat. Even if it's something weird as obscure like that, you know? For sure. Yeah, tournaments are a little bit of a different beast than your... The be yeah, the best know, way to get good at the game is to keep, just play games, yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, that's that's the main thing is just play more games. Yeah, that, that's like the best way to do it yeah. for anybody, you know. Oh, I mean, keep if playing, you ask keep learning any and... competitive player how many games they play in a week, it's like... Yeah, it's exponentially more than any of us. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's like four or five games sometimes. I mean, like, there was a point... You know, when I was a little less busy, that I was playing like six games a week, like at my local club. Like, yeah, I would, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Club, playing it, a game, it, going to my buddy's house, playing a game, forty k, like after work every day for a couple hours. But it takes know, a lot of your time too. But yeah, that's why a lot of these like pros that play the game, like that's their job. But yeah, they do so well because they play thirty games a week. You know, it's their job. You know, you know? <laughs> like yeah, exactly. Like they're 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 getting paid to do it. Exactly. I'm so, actually yeah. curious how much they actually make because I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I know they make YouTube revenue because they have these YouTube channels, but like, what else are they like? <laughs> like, how else right. are they making money? Like, like, are these Warhammer events like paying them to be there? Like, I don't get it. You know, I know yeah, you can get. You know, I imagine money. so. Like a lot, a lot of these like fringe GTs and things like that. Like they're they have nothing to do with Games Workshop, so. I wouldn't doubt if some of the bigger ones they like, hey, show up to our event, we'll buy your plane ticket. Sure. Sort of thing. I you know what I mean? Yeah, to fill seats. For sure. And have like those players there so people will watch the live streams or like people right. will attend even, you yeah. know. I agree. Which is cool. I mean, like every every game on this planet has all stars in it, and that's how it should be, right. you know. No, I agree. And I, I think but this particular I, game, you definitely get an advantage if yes. you can do it all the time. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it's funny because, uh, God, you probably won't know too much about this, but um, God, when I was in college, there was a game that was really big. I remember my buddy got me into it, and it was League of Legends. Do you know that oh, game? Oh, yeah, League. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. League I'm sure a lot of people know about League. So one of the most toxic games in the world, that ex I've ever seen one of the most toxic <laughs> communities absolutely just I mean like you know blight town kind of toxic like you step in it and you are already poisoned mm. I'm telling you man like I sunk four years of college into that game and I wondered why at the end of the day you know what I mean yep. <laughs> and it was just like I was like, man, like I played that game all the time. Like anytime I had free time, I just remember seeing. Oh, as long as you had fun with it, that's all that really matters. I mean, debatable. All right, well then. <laughs> debatable, but I will say this: <laughs> I remember watching one of the pro games because I was interested. I was like, oh, okay, th these people play for money. I wonder how good they are. I play all the time. They play all the time. They must be around. I mean, they're probably better than me, but they must be around. Dude. All right. Yeah, it was like night and day, dude. It was like, holy. I couldn't That's even cool. tell what was going on on the screen, dude. It was a mess. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, everything was planned out. But it was like, my computer was going bonkers just trying to watch it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, they're way above. And I remember thinking, I remember at that moment, I gave up all aspirations of playing, like, League of Legends competitively or even gaining any ranks or anything like that. I was like, it'll probably right. never happen. Like, unless I take this as a job that I'm doing eight hours a day. Exactly, day. yeah. That's like every game. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, some people are naturals, for sure. And Warhammer is definitely a tough one. So yeah. Warhammer, I mean, I think of it as, it's a board game, essentially, you know? So like, Yeah, for sure. For the sure. reaction speed that you need playing, you know, video games online, you don't need that. But what I think is, like, every... Tur it's all turn-based strategy. Exactly. Turn-based strategy. But the, the grand thing about that is everybody can be good if they put their minds to it in Warhammer. Whereas yeah, something exactly. like that, there's so many things that somebody might not have that will make them ineligible to become great at that game yeah whereas right. in warhammer everybody can do, what's, do well what, yeah right what's funny with warhammer like say say you're a wizard at the game right but you can't roll dice to save your life that's you're true. not gonna win games you know that's true and it's truly really random on the, on, on the other on the other token of it like you're not strategically bound to the game 
but you just roll sixes. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there it is. There <laughs> like, we go. Yeah, I knew a guy who was really unlucky with almost every single game he played. And it was apparent in many of our games, but he was tactically very good. He was very right. good at the game. And in fact, he said he used to go to these major tournaments and sometimes win. But he stopped playing when he had two tournaments in a row with his, I think it was like at the time, Night Goblins, where it was, it was two events in a row, the exact same thing happened. Yuna gets shot at, and I, this is Warhammer Fantasy, so you probably don't yeah. follow it or whatever. But, you know, back in the day, if you took a leadership test with one of your units for shooting casualties and you failed it, units within six inches of that unit had to also take leadership. And if they failed it, they also ran. And Night Goblins, are really bad leadership. They're like leader. They were like yeah. leadership four or something like that, really low. And he the just goblins, failed yeah. like every single leadership. His entire army ran off the board. Turn one. <laughs> game over. One no, turn well, that's just bad game mechanics, though. Oh, there were at the at the time, you know. Yeah. At the time, but my it's, God, I mean, two, games workshops come a long way. I'd say it, it has in some. Not ways, perfect. So. Come a long way. Yeah, for sure. It's never going to be perfect. I think people who think it's going to be perfect and there's going to be this no, yeah, there's balance, not a shot. Yeah, like, no way. You know, there's no too way. many of us trying to manipulate the in- intricate rules of the game. Absolutely, and there's always going to be better combos and better. But but that's part of the joy of the game is finding those combos. But maybe exactly. even creating new ones. You know, that you yep. don't see in competitive play. That maybe you know competitive players overlooked because of their hubris. <laughs> Facts, you know. <laughs> I mean, hey, we it's happening. We don't, like, we don't, we don't have to get into that. Yeah, but I mean, hey, it, it it's a thing. All right, man. Well, I'll let you go. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, brother. You have a lot of stuff to do today, but looking forward to that video. And for anybody wondering, Dead of Night is going to be posting some videos on YouTube about his thoughts about the Eldar and about different, you know, kind of aspects of the game, and maybe some list reviews and stuff like that yeah i think, I think that's kind of kind of like my main focus i want to do is like list reviews and honestly things to enhance the community as a whole you know i want to i want to be able to eventually be like accept donations of eldar models and send them to new players that maybe don't have the means to buy new eldar models that like i want to cool. i want to grow our community as a whole eventually you know in the long run that's awesome. Um, I have a lot of ideas for that, and that's the goal. You know, I I'm not sitting here wanting to make money off of these videos. I want to get better at the game. I want to get you better at the game. I want to get everybody better at the game, and I want to make every I want to make more people want to play Eldar. At the end of the day, like it's a passion of mine, a passion of yours, a passion for a lot of us, and yeah, that's kind of my main thing. And a lot of people that I've talked to trying to get them to play the game itself or pl- even play our army, the price tag's a big thing. Like, I want to be able to, like, like I, again, we talk, kind of talked about it earlier. People in my community that approach me that want to play Eldar, heck yes. I will do anything in my power to get you cheap models yes. or free models. Like, come we play Eldar more. with me. We, we need, need more. more. In our, yeah, exactly. So I'm all in on that. And that's, that's kind awesome. of my goal in the long run is make the community bigger that's really cool man i like that like like i i i don't i don't feel like i have to change the community's outlook on the game our eldar community like is so like knit tight and cool like i don't i don't even have to preach about anything like that you know i just want to get more people in get more people in get spread the models like let's do it you know that's my whole goal that's awesome well, that's a great goal, man, honestly. And I think I think you will attract more Eldar players to the game because you have a good outlook on the game and a good outlook on the faction, and that's really what's needed at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, I really appreciate that coming from you. Absolutely, man. I mean it. Good, brother. Thanks for having me again. Like, I, I can't express that any more than I feel like I have. Absolutely. I don't know well, how many I, words I can come up with. I mean, it. I, I like but I really appreciate that's it. The thing. I mean, that's why but, I yeah, want to. I have so much fun doing this stuff. Like we're we're both just super nerds at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It reminds me of Pokemon, the super nerd trainer that you come across every once in a while. <laughs> right. And that's that's but... me right there. You know. <laughs> but anyways, that's the end of my rant. Thanks again for having me, Proxy. Absolutely, man. Have a good one. And you know, once again, for all the patrons and supporters out there who support the channel, thank you so much. 
And if you do want to join the Patreon and, you know, join our Discord, I'll leave the link in the description for you. It's really cool. Get to talk to guys like Dead of Night and myself, among others, really cool members of the Eldar community that, you know, are very helpful and, you know, of very good strategic and tactical mind that you can pick their brain about, you know, your list and stuff like that. So if you're thinking of oh joining, definitely do yeah. so. The tips and tricks I've learned from Proxy's community are invaluable. Definitely come have a good time. Absolutely. And it's just fun in general, you know, just bring, just bring, you know, your convert. Well, I guess you're you, normal yeah, even self, if, you even know? if you're, even if you don't like uh, the game really itself or the strategy, the tactics, like there's a lot of modeling stuff we like to do and have fun. And like that whole aspect, we're also into that. Yeah. Your conversions. You know, so. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what I was trying to say, but then lost the words for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like we're also interested in that side of the house, you know. Some a lot of players are only in that side of the house, you know, which is right. cool. That's but awesome. we're also into that. So come join us. Yeah, join Proxy and me and like let's let's all paint some cool stuff and blow some space marines up. <laughs> yeah, it'll be an awesome adventure, man. All right, everybody. As well, always. That's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. Peace out.